Okay. Sometimes people make mistakes, you know, just simply due to ignorance, and sometimes it's intentional hardcore bias. And I don't really care about that. Some, <laughs> some other YouTube channel, I think it was like the dumbest thing I've ever heard, said that uh, me and all our team said that the XH1 Fuji film felt cheap and plasticky. <laughs> no, not at all. Let's be honest here, okay? Now, obviously, this is older technology here, right? Here we're looking at the Nikon D4. Well, when it came out, this is actually legitimately the toughest camera. Actually, that's not my opinion, you know. I'm the only YouTube channel that can actually fix this crap. When you talk about fixing, it means taking it apart and doing parts replacement. Nikon D4, unequivocally, is the toughest effing digital camera ever made. I mean, Nikon D4, D3, right, right along that. D5, no. New Nikon D5, no. D4, Nikon D3, period. Flat out the toughest digital camera ever made. The actual wall thickness on the X-H1 is even thicker than that on the uh, Nikon uh, D4, D4S. I have back here, by the way, if I could actually grab it. I might not be able to grab it. There we go, I can grab it. It's uh, contemporary, the uh, Fujifilm X-T2. I actually took this one apart because someone uh, murdered the poor thing. You know, they don't like dips in salt water. But here's the Nikon, I mean, excuse me, Nikon. <laughs> the Fujifilm X-T2. This is the magnesium chassis on it. Cheap and plasticky? No. $6,500 when it came out. We're looking at uh, essentially $2,000 in the X-H1. Depends on whether you're considering the vertical grip or not. Let's just say... 6,500 when it came out versus 2,000. There is more attention to detail on the Fujifilm X-H1 than there is, and I have a pair of Nikon D4s, and it's an excellent camera. It's a full-frame sensor, 16 megapixels, really, really great dynamic range. There's a known defect uh, fault on this. The two uh, rocker, uh, uh, rocker wheels, uh, they're actually rocker buttons for uh, autofocus point selection, and for going through your menus, these are known to fall off. This is actually a known defect on the Nikon D4 that they solved with the Nikon uh, D4S. They actually changed these things because I could actually sit there and like pry real, not pry too hard and you know pluck this thing right off this camera. The X-H1 has much better attention. Not that there's anything wrong with the Nikon D4 at all. Fujifilm is doing everything right. Um, God bless Fujifilm. That's just a statement. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a religious statement. It's just one of those things that uh, people say, at least here in the United States. Fujifilm is doing everything right. You know, they call this camera cheap and plasticky. Are you kidding me? Talk about, that's, that's, not, that's not an unintelligent or an, an ignorant statement. It, it, it's just a hardcore, hardcore, unmitigated bias. Um, and I'm not defending Fujifilm because they're not giving me anything. I'm just telling you that statement is flat out ludicrous. Just flat out ludicrous. It's just, it's, yeah, it's flat out absurdity, plain and simple. Um, there's actually only one thing that I wish Ni that Fujifilm had incorporated into this for their diopter selection. I wish they'd incorporated a pull out because on this you could actually run your hand around, uh, around across the diopter control and change it. With the Nikon, you can't do that. You actually have to pull it out and you actually have to adjust it. That's one thing I wish the Fujifilm would incorporate into their future cameras because that's a really good idea. Really good. Um, You know, back when this camera came out, 16 megapixels, and of course the autofocus is much faster on the Fujifilm X-H1 than the D4, and this is still a competent camera, and I know it's a full-frame camera, and it does have better dynamic range. It has nowhere near as good a low light as the X-H1 or X-T2. Um, it's old technology and signal processing. Um, yeah, that, that statement is just ludicrous. I mean, that's just that's just biased and unmitigated. I'm when I reviewed the Sony uh, A7 III. I mean, I'm biased because I hate the ergonomics on Sony and I despise their menu system. But I say that flat out and forthrightly. But the, all the stuff that I went to actually judge it on, I was I was accurate on judging it. The uh, 
Focus peaking is nowhere near as good. Nowhere near as good. And surprisingly bad. And a few other things. The battery life is better. I mean, it has awesome battery life. I'm fair to these cameras. I don't care what people say. I, I caught flack from a bunch of ignorant Sony fanboys when I reviewed the Sony a7 III, but I was fair to that camera. I did despise it. I was actually uh, shockingly uh, surprised at how bad it was. I was expecting it to be a lot better. These are two excellent cameras, you know, separated by a few years, obviously. Eh, yeah, a few years of separation. But, uh... Yeah, and they'll call the X-H1 cheap and plasticky. Hey, it's just ridiculous. It's just, it's just like a profane absurdity. Profane absurdity. The chassis wall thickness is even thicker than on the X-T2. The precision, there's no tighter precision on any modern digital camera than from Fujifilm. I know that for a fact. That's not my opinion. Better than Olympus, Pentax. Pentax is soon to be out of business. Pentax, Olympus, Sony, Nikon, Canon. I know that's, I know that's the case. This was one of my videos where I muse out loud. Like, did this really deserve a video? Kind of it did. I was just thinking about that uh, for a while. So, as I was working on my lecture. Both of these are incredible cameras. I mean, $6,500 new versus basically 2000 Um... As so far as weather conditions, uh, I actually can't think that the D4 would actually take more or less abuse or vice versa than the X-H1. I mean, I'm not going to go up to the North Pole and uh, test uh, either one of these cameras. But uh, they're both incredibly well built. Yeah, cheap and plastic in my fanny. Fuji.